Once again, we are spinning the wheel to determine which Nancy Drew game we're analyzing this time. I'll be totally honest, it did spin Midnight in Salem this time, but I personally have not finished that game. I do plan on it, but I have not yet, and I didn't think I would be able to quite do it justice. So I did bend the rules a little, and I spun again. Please forgive me. I just want to give you all the best analysis I can. So the second spin gave me Phantom of Venice. Time to go to Italy, y'all. Please note that this video will contain minor spoilers due to the nature of these characters' roles. So if you've not completed Phantom of Venice, I do recommend skipping this video and waiting for the next one. You can just go back and watch the first video twice and watch the second video as many times as you want. All right, leave this video in three, two, one. Let's get sleeping, y'all. First up is the maddening mosaic mendacious man himself, Colin Baxter. He definitely needs a dog that won't be a complete bull in a china shop, or he will be constantly angry and it would be the worst companion ever. Think Nancy breaks the microscope, but times 100. So a dog he can train well is a high priority. Colin also has an appreciation for aesthetics as we see with his eye for mosaic colors. So I believe he would be one who would look for a dog who is very aesthetically pleasing and with probably more than one color in their coat. And that way he can spend countless hours deciding exactly what color brown the dog's fur is. But the real question is, would the dog also have an alias or no? Just kidding. Anyways, for Colin, I have chosen an English Cocker Spaniel. They may not be the first dog many of y'all thought when I said trainable, but they are usually pretty eager to please and probably wouldn't mind watching the Tessere slides for a while. I hope. They also typically stay below 40 pounds too, making him less likely to slam into one of his working tables and cause all of his tiles to go scattering. And also, I could kind of see him making an entire mosaic of the dog, with a dog bone and all, and then just hang it on his all his well hang it on his wall. Wow, I can't talk as artwork. It would be very time consuming because Colin would make sure to hold out until he found a very, very unique color that completely matched his dog. And he would also hold out a long, long time to get the dog because he would want one with a less common coat, like sable coloring or a blue roan and tan. But he would know exactly how rare his dog's coat coloring was and make sure to bring it up at any given chance. Next on my list, is Margarita Falberg, and you and I both know she's going to want a purse dog that she can carry around to all of her soirees. It will be completely untrained and will probably pee under the table and snap at anyone who comes near. Having a fancy little dog will help her keep up appearances that she's doing quite well financially, even if those around her are suspecting otherwise. I mean, can't she pay for a trainer? But it would be an adorable little public nuisance. We won't get into the sad story of her husband passing away that may cause her to have a less favorable opinion of dogs, but maybe a really cute little new pooch could help revise that. So Margarita gets a Pomeranian. Now before you say anything, yes, Lilo looks like a Pomeranian. Do we know what Lilo's breed is? Not at all. I've had all sorts of animal experts give their opinion on her and it always varies. She's a Lilo and is much better trained than Margarita's dog. I'm not sure what color Pomeranian she would get. She kind of strikes me as like a red Pom lady, but I would love to know what your opinion is down in the comments. Also, if not a Pomeranian, what other little yappy dog do you think that Margarita would carry around in her purse? Or do you think that she would go total opposite and actually getting something closer to a Great Dane? Either way, we know that the dog would have a closet of clothes and a diamond studded collar that she can't afford. Another one of our co-inhabitants, Helena Berg, strikes me as the type who would have a very nosy dog. So a good sniffer is a must when it comes to having an investigative journalist as an owner. From the games, we know Helena wanted to dress up as a cat for Carnival. She might be a cat person, but she's getting a dog in this video. We also know she likes stereotype Sue, as she assumed Nancy would want cheap food as an American and thinks stolen art is so Venetian. So, why don't we give Helena a dog from her birthplace of Austria? The Alpine Doxbrack is an Austrian breed and was bred for tracking deer, boar, hare, and fox, and are known for being great at following trails that other dogs would have long given up on. 
They look like a dachshund, but are a little bit taller. They're sturdy and fairly fearless for a smaller breed. Their prey drive is strong, like Helena, and they're always searching for the next story. Neither of them ever want to give up on the hunt. Just as Helena was unrelenting in her pursuits of what she valued. Someone who I was really looking forward to doing an analysis on, though, is Enrico Tazza. Although he could just be described as a bad guy in the game, there's no denying that he has a fun side, and I'm not just talking about the fact that he constantly looks like he's about to go to a party. He likes repetitive situations and things he knows, which is why he wears the same costume every year, and why we have to beat him in Scopa before he'll talk to us every time. Italy is his home, and a place he knows very well. So, Enrico deserves a fun-loving dog from Italy, and I couldn't help myself. Enrico gets the Volpino Italiano. They look like bigger Lilos! And just like Lilo, the Volpino likes to play and has fun bursts of energy. Just picture Enrico deep in a game of Scopa, and suddenly he sweeps the cards and yells, Scopa! And this big, white puffball goes bouncing around on its hind legs, barking in celebration. They're also watchful dogs, and would definitely let Enrico know if anyone was trying to cheat. My favorite thing to picture is Enrico giddily peddling his giant peddling, petting his giant fluff ball with all the baby talk when suddenly someone from the crime syndicate shows up and he would immediately turn all business. But his dog gives away his playful nature, wagging its tail anytime the word Scopa is mentioned. Our last suspect to match for this video is Antonio Fango. While we don't see a lot of him in the games besides some snooping and a few scary close encounters, I think it's safe to assume he is a very secretive and probably paranoid person. Everything seems to be encrypted, and he takes extra measures to make sure his information is secure. Not that that stops Nancy, but that's neither here nor there. As funny as it would be to give him a cute little dog which he can make baby talk to just like Enrico, I believe he would purposely choose a dog that would genuinely provide him with some extra protection. When I think of big bad dogs, the Cane Corso comes to mind very quickly. While it isn't fair to stereotype a dog breed as mean, we can definitely recognize when a dog has the ability to be strong and protective. It would have been so much harder for Nancy to break into Fongo's office had a big dog been barking the moment she started messing with the lock. These dogs are also known for being loyal to its owner with the potential to be assertive if not given the proper training. But I mean, imagine how easily Fongo could train one since he paid, or maybe paid someone else to train, that pigeon. Stealing a note off a pigeon's leg is a lot easier than stealing a note off of a big dog's leg. Overall, a dog like that could help Fongo feel even safer in his less savory activities. And once again, that's all there is. There isn't any more. I guess I could have done one dog for each of Colin's identities, but that seemed a little bit too much. I did enjoy these, and while there's only one main culprit, most of the people in this game have something to do that, well, wouldn't be well received in mixed company. And it's interesting because dogs don't understand when their owner breaks the law, and they really don't care. So, even those who don't follow the rules can have a loving canine companion. So, do you agree with me? I'm having so much fun making these videos, and I'll let you in on a little secret. I've already spun the wheel twice again, so I could begin writing those scripts, and I'm very excited about the characters I'm getting to analyze in these next two times. Any guesses? No, it's not ghost dogs. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking the video and giving me a follow. You can also find me on Instagram under the same name. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments about what other breeds these characters might go well with. If you have another character that you feel strongly about, put that in the comments as well or message me on Instagram. All suggestions that I use will get referenced in the description of each video. Thanks for sleuthing, y'all.